All right. So my name is Nicholas Koster. I'm a student here at Full Stack, and I'm going to talk to you today about GraphQL. Who here has heard of GraphQL? Who? Okay, that's a few hands. That's cool. Who here has heard of React? Probably everyone, right? So React, GraphQL, and Relay are three technologies which were uh, which work together and have been developed by Facebook. Now, GraphQL is a querying language similar to SQLize. It, um, it, it has a similar popularity on Google search as SQLize, so I figure it would be worth for you guys to learn about it. So today I'm going to go quickly through what GraphQL is and the problem it tries to solve. I'm going to talk a bit about the top features, and then I'm also going to spend some time going through a, a practical demo. I'll start off by um, just by showing the, uh, the problem that it solves. So I have, this is not what I want to show. I have a, um, I have a small database here. It's, uh, I, I was at 2 a.m. last night. I did not have a lot of inspiration, so I went with, I went with friends. <laughs> Characters, <laughs> um, and the the challenge. I mean, we all know this, right? So we've all worked in SQLize. We know how it's a wonderful language and it has wonderful documentation. Um, but we also know that when our app gets more complicated and we want to do more complex queries, it becomes difficult to manage because we have to write lots of endpoints. So there is, and, and Facebook was facing, uh, facing a similar issue, and they created something that allows you to do this. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, it basically allows you to look up a person by their ID. You've got their name. It's going to return their name. So number five, that's Monica. And it's also going to tell you their, um, the name of their friends and the favorite movie of their friends, all in one query. So it's pretty sweet. So that's, that's GraphQL. And that's the end of my, no, that's not the end of my presentation. <laughs> um, so a little bit more about it. So you know, why did uh, Facebook uh, come up with this? They came up with it because they were developing um, apps for mobile, and they started off developing their apps for mobile in HTML5. That did not uh, scale so well. Users weren't that happy, so they started developing native applications. Long story short, they started developing this because it's just m much more intuitive, as, uh, as you just saw in that example, and uh, as you'll see later when we go into a bit more detail. Once again, you guys have to, like, if there's a few things you take away from this presentation, it's that GraphQL is not, it's not a database. So it's not a database. It doesn't replace your Postgres or your, your Mongo database. It is a querying language. It's actually a specification that, um, that says how you should, you can interact with a, with a database, but it, it doesn't, actually require you to use any type of database or to write in any particular language. I believe that Facebook uses a JS implementation of it, and this is, the, this is the one that I used. But there are also implementations of it in Ruby, in Python, and other languages. Um, so, whoa, oh, shit, I didn't, there we go, even better. So now you guys can see. So. There's my, uh, there's my beautiful database on the right. You've got a front end, back end. So it's easy when you have simple requests. That's easy, right? You can look up the, uh, the information on a particular user. But it gets more complicated when we want to get more data, like the favorite movie of the friends of Chandler. This is tricky. And even like it, we might not have accounted it yet, but I'm, I'm sure that once you go out and you, you get a job, you work for a big company, you're managing a, a large app, you may run into issues where it becomes very tricky to manage all the different endpoints. And this is where GraphQL could really save the day. So we saw, that, we saw this before. What, what, I, what I personally really like about it is that 
it's just super intuitive, right? The the query is um, it's it's not you know, convoluted in the way that a, a, a SQLized query might be difficult and need some deciphering, and you, you you know you really need to read the documentation. Here, it's it's all fairly the simple stuff is straightforward. Of course, there's more complex aspects to it, but the 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 basis of it is relatively easy to understand, and um, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. So it's shaped in the same way as the data that's returned. It can be used to resolve data from any API or backend. So you, you can query databases, but you can also query any, anything else that returns a data that specify, that's um, returned in a specific format. Um, a query returns exactly what the client asked for and no more. So this is, this is great if you're developing a mobile application, because mobile applications, you don't want to abuse the bandwidth. Because if you do, then that might slow down the user experience, and users might not get happy. They might stop using your app. You might lose your job. Not a good thing. So um, there you go. GraphQL could, could, save, it, could save it. And it's, uh, it's part of the Facebook platform, which they're really pushing right now. And they're open sourcing it. And it's really cool. I don't know much about Relay. I don't know much about React. I learned a little bit about GraphQL. But it seems that these three really work very well together. So if you guys are learning React, don't forget to learn about GraphQL as well. So you want to take it for a spin? This is how I feel, by the way. I feel like this kid. Um, but I do want to take it for a spin because I think it's, uh, it's quite cool. So you guys saw my, uh, you guys saw my, my little database. Um, now, in, in reality, this wouldn't be your database. It would probably be in, it could be a, a Postgres database, or it could be a Mongo, a NoSQL database. And OK, there are two very important elements um, of, of the GraphQL language. So in any, uh, when, whenever you're doing it, you need to specify two things. You need to specify the query type. And you need to specify, like, tell, say something about the type system, like the underlying structure of the database that you're querying. So that's what I've done here. And um, I, I want to talk a little bit about this resolve function, because that resolve function is really, I mean, I, I, I watched a few videos, and people were really, like, getting up and, like, giving standing ovations for this. Uh, so I hope you. Maybe, maybe you guys will, will feel inspired by it as well. This is really cool, because what, what this means is that, OK, right now what I'm doing is I'm just I'm simply querying. Right on the person, I've got a friends field, as you know from here. And I'm just mapping over it. And, I'm, and I've got a little helper function up here. And I'm querying it. I'm querying my, my database like that. But what if this can all be done asynchronously? And if, if you're running Facebook, which you know, Facebook is a pretty big, uh, big app. Like I, I heard something that there's like 200 and I don't know some ridiculous number of queries, 260 billion something queries. Um, I don't know per per day, just on their back end. Just think about that. That's that like that's mind blowing. But anyway, so what what this means is that that you can be ha you can have a lot of these resolve functions all running um, asynchronously, and they can return anything. So you might you might actually query the, um, the, T, like the uh, US Postal Service uh, using an ID. And that, like, that, might return, that might return something. And you might do something else. Go to McDonald's and take you know, whatever it was, uh, take the response there. And you, like, you might take that response, go to McDonald's. And McDonald's might come back to you with something else. And you could do all of that. And you can't do that when you're, uh, when you're doing SQL as. Or you, maybe you can, but I, I don't know how to do that. So um, the, yeah, so that, that's it. GraphQL, guys, uh, I encourage you to, uh, to look into it. Um, there is a, uh, what is built into GraphQL. This is going to be my final point, because I believe I'm out of time. So the, w what is built into GraphQL is this very sweet user interface. So w whenever you, whenever you uh, set this up like, so, like, like this, you use the Express GraphQL uh, package, it will give you this automatically. So you could, for example, add 
other stuff here like there okay that that doesn't work by the way because we're the query requires an ID now it does work um, and you can see it's just like it's super easy to use and it and what's also really nice about it is that it will tell you if you're doing something wrong and, and it will give you pretty specific unlike um, unlike some uh, languages it gives you very specific so like, like before I had a, I had a name and I was like oh let's query Joey but actually that's not allowed and it tells you yeah you know, it tells you that so that's that's pretty cool um, so yeah hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoy this hope you, I encourage you guys to check it out I've got some some links up here I'll share them um, there's just tons of uh, resources out there and it, it really seems to be to be growing I wouldn't be surprised if you come back to full stack a year from now, two years from now, and people will be learning about this. Thanks.